So we're ready to begin rocking this pond in. But before we begin, I wanna show you a tip that'll save you a ton of money on your project. Now we wanna use this beautiful stone right here with blues and browns, it's nice and angular. We wanna use it on the coping stone around the edge of the pond and in the waterfall. But it's not necessarily using this expensive stone below water level. So we've chosen a stone that is really affordable and we'll use it for below water level. Now the rock that's below water level is going to have a fine biofilm on it, there'll be a little bit of algae growing on it, so you're not really going to recognize the fact that it's different. Now we will use a couple of key, uh, key specimen stones below water level, so there's a real continuity of the coping stone and it looks like this stone kind of spills down into the bottom of the pond, and so it's going to have a great look, but it's going to save you a ton of money. So the next tip I'm going to give you is I want you to begin rocking the bottom of the pond and work your way out. I've seen a lot of people start rocking the pond at the top and as they work their way down, you'll find that there's some tension on the liner. We don't want any tension on the liner. So we're going to rock the bottom, pull out slack on the next bench, and then rock the next bench, and then pull ourselves out to the top. Let's begin. So what I've gone here and done is I place a frame boulder on either side of this fish cave. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to place a bridge stone across the top so that it hides the face of the fish tunnel. And when you approach your pond, you don't see it at all. Take that side. Yep. Okay, let it go down. We'll pull the liner back. Pull the liner back. Now give me that cool coping stone. That one's good. Nice. So we've got the lower end of the pond rocked in. And as you can see, we have the affordable stone integrated through most of the bottom. But we've also incorporated some of the more expensive stone in amongst the other part so it looks like it blends right into the lower end of the pond where you get the, the cobble and the smoother stone look. Uh, the next step is you can see all these voids that are in here from this stone. We're going to take some, some smaller cobble and gravel and we'll fill in all these voids and we will fill in <clears throat> some waterfall foam in the cracks as we work our way up to help solidify the wall. Now if you do 8 inch shelves all the way down uh, the walls will be a whole lot more stable but I like the look of having these tall walls. This is a about a 24 inch vertical wall and then it steps back and goes up another 8 or 10 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the voids, we'll fill in some cracks with uh, the waterfall foam, help harden it off and then we have the good look. Okay, let's do this.
So what we've done here on these tall walls, we want to lock everything in place. Now this is not your typical eight inches down, eight inches down shelf. Otherwise you'd put one eight inch rock there and it would hold in place. But since we have a 24 inch vertical wall right here, we want to take the cobble and gravel, fill all the voids, squirt a little bit of the waterfall foam in there. When it hardens off, the wall is nice and strong and then you can walk around the whole top edge and not have to worry about it falling in on you.